Future Bomb. This tutorial was requested by Sweet Verdi Aces. In this content, I will be mentioning some parts of the ukulele. So if you are not familiar to some parts of the ukulele, please click this link for that lesson. The song is in key of C sharp and in this key, the chords are difficult for beginners. So I transposed down the chords by a half step and the resulting chords are mostly easy. And these are the chords that I am presenting in this tutorial. But these transposed chords sound lower than the original tune. So if you want to play at record key or original tune, all you have to do is to place a capo at first fret. C major. A minor, F major, D minor, E major, C dominant 7th, F minor, D major, G dominant 7th, G major, B flat 7, E flat, A minor 7, and F sharp diminish. So there are 14 chords. If you are not familiar at reading chord diagrams, click this link for that lesson. The song is written in 3 4 time signature. That means there are 3 beats in every measure. So you count up to three. So if the tempo is slow, you count like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. If the tempo is fast, you count like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. But for this song, the tempo is like this. One, two, three. Quarter note counting. One, two, three. One, two, three. But for this song, we will do eight note counting because the strumming pattern that I'm suggesting for this content or for this song is this. If you want to learn more or have a better understanding or deeper understanding about quarter note counting and eight note counting and the basic strumming patterns, click this link for that lesson. Looking at the pattern, you see the counters 1 and 2 and 3 and those numbers 1, 2, and 3 are actually the beat counts. The song is written in 3-4 time signature, so there are 3 beats in every measure. So you count up to 3. But the rhythmic pattern that I'm suggesting requires 8 note counting, and that counting is actually for 8 note counting. 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and it's because there are strokes that sound short looking at count 1 you see a downstroke another downstroke is at count 2 and between counts 2 and 3 right where you have the letter N you have an upstroke and another downstroke at count 3 and on the letter N after count 3 or between count 3 and to the next measure at count 1, there's another upstroke. So there are a total of 5 strokes. If you look at the pattern, the downstroke at count 1 lasts for 1 beat. But the downstroke at counts 2 and 3 lasts for half a beat only because there is an upstroke between counts 2 and 3 and another upstroke between counts 3 and to the next one. So the stroke at counts 2 and 3 as well as the upstrokes between counts 2 and 3 and the upstroke between counts 3 and 1 are actually strums that are half shorter than what you have at count 1. So those strokes at counts 2 and three and are actually 
eight notes, eight note strums. So the strumming pattern actually is a complex pattern. It's not a simple or basic strumming pattern. It is a pattern that is composed of a quarter note strum and followed by a series of four eight note strums. So to make a demo for that, if our tempo is one and two and three and using chord C major, one and two and three and one and two and three and one. So this is the pattern that I'm suggesting for the whole song, except for the latter part of the song. The playing time of each of these chords for this song is one measure, but there are three times where you just strum each chord once, and those are the latter part of the song. You'll see them in the demonstration where you just strum once for one measure. One and two and three and. The song has actually has two verses only, and these two verses were repeated to end the song. Now let's talk about the transition of chords for the first verse or verse one. You have C major and your ring finger on the first string, a third fret from the capo. And it's followed by A minor. So you move your middle finger to the fourth string, a second fret from the capo, A minor. Now the next chord is F major. You keep your middle finger there. You just add your index finger on the second string at first fret from the capo. And this would be F. After that, it goes back to C. So your ring finger on the first string at third fret. And then it goes back to F again. And then back to C. And then to D minor, you have your index finger on the second string at first fret. Middle finger on the fourth string at second fret. And ring finger on the uh, third string at second fret. And then it goes to E major. You position your index finger on the first string at second fret, your middle finger on the fourth string at fourth fret, ring finger on third string at fourth fret, and small finger on the second string at fourth fret. And then goes back to A minor, just slide your middle finger down to second fret. And then the next chord is C dominant seven. Position your index finger on the first string at first fret. And then it's followed by F again, so F major. So index finger on the second string at first fret, middle finger on the fourth string at second fret. And then it's followed by F minor, which is the hardest chord in this set of chords. For F minor, position your index finger on the fourth string at first fret, middle finger on the second string at first fret, and Use your small finger to play or press the first string at third fret. That's the sound of F minor. And then it's followed by A minor. So again, just move your middle finger on the fourth string at second fret. The other strings are left open. And it's followed by D major. You can keep your middle finger there or just keep your middle finger there. Position your ring finger on the third string at second fret and your small finger on the second string at second fret so you have three fingers at the same fret the first string is left open and then it's followed by d minor so all you have to do is just keep your middle and ring finger take out the small finger position your index finger on the second string at first fret that's d minor and then it's followed by g dominant seven keep your index finger there your middle finger goes down to the third string and your ring finger goes down to first string. Both fingers are at second fret, but this one at first. This is the sequence of chords for the first verse. And for the second verse, or the next verse, we have C major. It's followed by A minor. And then to F major, so just add your index finger here on the second string at first fret. It goes back to C major, back to F major, and then again to C major. And then there's D minor, so index finger on the second string at first fret, 
middle finger on the 4th string at 2nd fret, ring finger on the 3rd string at 2nd fret. And then to E major, index finger on the 1st string at 2nd fret, middle finger on the 4th string at 4th fret, ring finger on the 3rd string at 4th fret, and small finger on the 2nd string at 4th fret. Then it's followed by A minor, again. And then it's followed by A minor 7. Just play all the strings open. And then you have F sharp diminish. Position your index finger on the 4th string at 2nd fret. Middle finger on the 2nd string at 2nd fret. And then the next chord is F minor. To F minor, all you have to do is just slide these two fingers down, one fret down. And then add your small finger on the 1st string at 3rd fret. And then it's followed by C major. Since you already have that finger there, you can just leave it there to play C major. Take out the other fingers. And then back to F major. To C major. Again, once to F major. To C major. To A minor. And then to D minor. Just add your index finger on the 2nd string at 1st fret and your ring finger on the 3rd string at 2nd fret. And then to G, index finger on the 3rd string at 2nd fret, middle finger on the 1st string at 2nd fret, ring finger on the 2nd string at 3rd fret. And then to C major. And then there are three chords that you have to play to repeat or to go back to verse, to first verse. And those are B flat 7, E flat, and G dominant 7. B flat 7 is you have to lay your index finger across all four strings and then position your middle finger on the third string at second fret. Just that. And then to E flat, it's actually played with your index finger on the first string at first fret middle finger on the 4th string at 3rd fret, ring finger on the 3rd string at 3rd fret, and small finger on the 2nd string at 3rd fret. But since we're playing B flat 7 before this chord, and this is B flat 7, you can simply move to E flat by just keeping this finger. So that means you still have to press all 4 strings. And then all you have to do is bring your middle finger on the 4th string at 3rd fret and your ring finger on the 3rd string at 3rd fret and small finger on the 2nd string at 3rd fret. So from B flat 7 to E flat major and then this is followed by G dominant 7 and this is G dominant 7 index finger on the 2nd string at 1st fret middle finger on the 3rd string at 2nd fret, and ring finger on the 1st string at 2nd fret. And after this, you go back to 1st verse. So to apply the strumming pattern that I'm suggesting, I'll apply it on the chords of the 2nd verse. And this is how it goes. One and two and three and 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 one two and three and one and 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 that you have to play to continue or to repeat the first verse B flat 7 1 and 2 and 3 and then E flat 
major one and two and three and and then to G dominant seventh one and two and three and now for the complete demonstration or performance video for this song click this link for that lesson the song sheet is available at musicnotes.com you can uh, for a little amount you can download a pdf file of the song of the song sheet and also you can print so you can find the link in the description box thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this tutorial have a nice day